do most oncologists think fruit should be avoided by cancer patients? You know, I don't know what oncologists think. You know, it's hard to know um, what they're going to say. Every every oncologist would have a, would have a different opinion. Um, you know, they should know whatever they tell the patient. Is it going to um, um, help them help them manage their disease without toxicity? Uh, that, therefore, you have to. It's a shame that we have to go to people that are unfamiliar with these concepts. I mean, you should be talking to the oncologists and say they should be the ones, not me. You know, we, we, why am I doing this? Why am I sitting here when they should be sitting here? It would be horrible if you have every, an oncologist sitting here he, and he argues everything that I'm saying. He says, oh, no, give them as much sugar in, as possible. Sugar doesn't cause cancer. Uh, or, well, sugar doesn't cause cancer. But if you have cancer, sugar can make it grow faster. So um, people go overboard with a lot of this stuff. Okay, so they're going to eat, you know, only plants and they're going to not eat any sugar because sugar, sugar does not cause cancer. Okay, our body makes sugar from gluconeogenesis. We make sugar from, uh, from uh, carbohydrates that we eat, from um, uh, amino acids. Uh, very hard to, you can take two glycerol backbones from fatty acids, put them together and you get a glucose mole molecule. But you burn energy to make energy. Um, sugar is pure energy without, you don't have to burn energy to get energy from sugar. Uh, or glutamine, glutamine is a pure energy source, an amino acid. So, so um, but oncologists should know that there are certain things that, that uh, work uh, that shouldn't be done um, or put patients at risk for having a tumor recurrence. And it's unfortunate that a lot of these guys don't know that. And I don't blame them. I mean, they're only products of the system. They've only been trained to do certain things. It's not their fault that no one came in and told them, hey, this is not good. They're just trained to do what, do, what they do. Um, now, some of them are starting to recognize what they've been doing is wrong. I've had some physicians come to me that were oncologists their whole life, had retired, and they were, some were weep, weeping uh, and knowing their whole life that what they were doing to these patients was not the best thing, but this is what they were trained to do, and this is what they did to earn a living, only to realize later on, because they didn't have the, the real nuts and bolts of, of why they were doing what they were doing was so, so horrific in the light of, of, of what we know now and what Warburg knew. Um, so it's, it's a pretty much of a dis, 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 very, very unsettling, very unsettling to some people once they come to understand. And then there's some people who, who are so disturbed by this, they don't want to understand it. They don't want to feel that their whole life's work was putting people at risk for recurrence or even killing them. Um, and that's a very hard thing to do. When you're, when you're a health care professional, your job is to heal people and make them well. And the system told you to be treated with chemicals and radiation and things that make the opposite, it's, this is it's very hard. If I were a physician and somebody told me what I'm telling them now, I'd be devastated knowing this kind of stuff. But hey, you know, the facts are the facts. You just gotta deal with it. Why have you come to different conclusions than many other people that speak about cancer? Why should anyone believe your conclusions are more accurate than what the mainstream accepted view on cancer is? Well, I mean, we, the, we went back and we looked at the uh, where the concept came from, that we, we uncovered, we did experiments, we have reevaluated data in light of two competing theories. So you have facts. The facts of the disease are clear. They've been published in thousands and thousands of research articles. Some of these are clear facts. No one denies the dysregulated cell growth of cancer. No one denies that cancer cells have mutations. No one denies that the metabolism of cancer cells is abnormal. The question is, how do you put all those facts together in an in, in a, um, a understandable organization? And you have two competing, main competing theories to explain the facts. As I said, you have the mitochondrial metabolic theory or the somatic mutation theory. And you go back and find what was the origin of those ideas from the very beginning. Who were the people that actually define these things that made the, the world the way it is today. Otto Warburg was the most powerful proponent of the mitochondrial metabolic theory, and he had very compelling evidence to support that. Theodore Bovary, a German scientist, um, looked at cells under the microscope and the sea urchin and saw abnormal chromosomes. 
and guessed that this might be happening to cancer cells. He had no clue about cancer, knew nothing about cancer, and he just speculated that maybe cancer is due to a bunch of chromosomal imbalances. Um, and, you know, when DNA was discovered, they found chromosomal imbalances. Um, but what I did was I put together all the experiments that showed that you can take cancer nuclei and put them in th with chromosomal imbalances and mutations and put them in a new cytoplasm with new mitochondria and you don't get cancer. And if you take the nucleus of the normal cell and put it in the cytoplasm of the tumor cell, you got cancer. So it was clear that Otto Warburg's theory can better explain the origin of the disease than can the gene theory. Now this information is not known to the majority of oncologists. They don't have time to read it. They're working every day in their office, hundreds of cancer patients coming through. They don't have time, like I did, to sit down and evaluate thousands and thousands of research articles in light of two competing theories. So if, one, if, if there's a dogmatic view and everybody thinks it's one way, nobody ever thinks of the other way. So you have to present the data to support the other way, and then you have to let people come to their own conclusion. And they have to look at it and debate it and talk about it. And, and that's the way it, things will move forward. So my view, I didn't make this up myself. You know, I look back at the people who actually did these things. I reevaluated all of the things that we're doing in light of two competing theories. And when you, when, and anyone with a rational capability, and I find, I find that lay people, Students and lay people who are not indoctrinated by a particular viewpoint see and compare and contrast, and they come, wow, it's clear that this, this is going to explain, much clear. But people who have been indoctrinated into a dogmatic view cannot accept those findings regardless. So you think the people that should can't because they're locked into a dogmatic view. The person that's not linked to a dogma can compare and contrast in a more unbiased way and come, yeah, this is, makes complete sense. So this is why we have this great, the, the lay people understand what I'm talking about better than the scientists do. And the scientists control the top medical schools and the top medical schools are beholden to an industry that supports one viewpoint. And there you have this, so the lay people on one side and the medical establishment on the other side, so something has to give. Either we're, going to, either we're going to be dictated to by an organization that doesn't understand the biology and we're all going to be treated in one particular way or there's going to be some sort of a revolution that's going to take over and say, listen, we've got to discuss this and we have to do it in a rational way and we have to come, let the dust settle and let's start trying these other, other options. Because you don't have a dog in the fight, right? And then when you have a loved one that does get cancer, the first thing you do is you run off to the top and Sloan Kettering uh, or... Dana Farber, MD Anderson, Moffitt Cancer Center, you're going to go to these places and you're going to think those folks know what they're doing, all right? They're trained not to kill you. They're trained to use radiation and chemo at doses that are not going to try to kill you, but they bring you close to death with the hope that your body is going to recover. They don't know about the biology of cancer. And if they do, they're calling the genes, call, they, they say the gene mutations cause the abnormal metabolism rather than the reverse. So, so you, 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 have to, you have to recognize, you know, I'm not, if I had some Bert Vogelstein here, he'd be saying, no, no, there's the evidence. You know, the evidence says the genes. But what about the nuclear transfer experiments? Did you ever address the nuclear? No, I didn't address those experiments. Well, you've got to address everything. I address everything. I look at every fact of this disease and weigh them in, in light of the two competing theories. Who does that, right? So all I did was just bring this to light and let the world determine where the dust settles. Let other people, let the lay people weigh in because they're ultimately the ones that are going to get blasted by this stuff. So they're not interested in making a lot of money. They just want to save, the, save their ass, basically. I want something that's going to help me. And if you're, if you're the top guy and you're telling me this, okay, I'm going to follow your method. And it's deceitful. If the guy really, under, the, 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 now it's not, if he doesn't understand, how can he give you the right information? So you follow the core of what the standard of the field is. And as I said, we got 1,600 people a day dying from this disease, which is un 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 unconscionable. And it's every, every country in the world, the same thing. All people dying, so many dying, so many maimed and mutilated uh, and devastated. I mean, it's unbelievable. It, it's just, it, you think about it, it even gets worse and bigger than you ever thought in your life. It's brutal. No, I think, you know, I think the change could come um, 
from people recognizing, coming to know that this is a disease that can be managed, and we've seen a lot of evidence, without toxicity uh, or minimal, minimal toxicity using procedures and strategies that have been looked at over millennia, uh, but now better organized. And I think that the, um, the private organizations, the foundations, need to get their act together. And the sad thing about a lot of these foundations is that they give money out and things, and you look at their ad scientific advisory board, because your lay people say, well, I have to go to the experts. To, they're they're going to make the decisions. And you look at, I did this. I looked at the scientific advisory board for the Susan Coleman Foundation. And they're all on the, uh, they're all gene guys. They're, they're all, everybody thinks, every one of those guys on the Susan Coleman thing, cancer is a genetic disease. So how are you going to raise all this money for breast cancer and expect to get anything done? It, it's just am amazing. So you look at the scientific advisory boards for all the major foundations, and they all think cancer is a genetic disease. So how much, where are you going to get the progress? So the very foundations that should be helping the laypersons are actually in, in, uh, inadvertently uh, in, the, in the camp of the people who think the cancer is something other than what it is. It's unbelievable. Hmm. I could go on. I'm just touching the surface of this thing. When you've spent as many hours and years investigating the depths of this disease as the way I have, I, I could sit here for three days telling you things uh, that you would be shocked about that we know about on this whole thing. And it's more or less the scientific evidence. It doesn't just have to do policy issues. It's actually the scientific experiments themselves and how they were done and, and the controls and all the different things that were put in. And when you'd go through one after another after another, you say to yourself, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so it goes much deeper than this.